aloe vera. And I'm here just to share with you some words of encouragement. I believe that this is a time for us in 2020 to really put our trust in God. The question is, how are you walking through 2020? How are you walking through 2020 as a Christian? Are you still at the same place? Are you still doing the same thing? Are you in a, a, a quagmire where you are unconcerned? You can care less with all the shaking that's happening around us. The Christians, and I'm speaking to the Christians, those of you who go to church and sit down in the pew, with the shakings that are happening in the earth, the earthquake, political shaking, coronavirus, uh, the, the senseless deaths and killings and homicides and, and suicides that are happening in our communities and the things that are happening in our churches, the, the confusion that's happening in our churches and all this is a lack of something. There's something missing and what's missing is the art of going to God in prayer. Now in the word of God in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. Habakkuk 3 and verse 2. It says, Habakkuk said, O Lord, revive thy work. O Lord, revive thy work. Can you say that with me? O Lord, revive thy work. Pastor, that uh, work is God's work. Do not abandon God's work. This is a time when God is going to reward the faithful men and women of God who are staying by the stuff. When things are looking dim and things are looking black and things are looking as if the light will go out in the house of God in the community. But I just came by just to remind you how to Habakkuk 3 2. It says, you got to cry out and say, Oh Lord, revive thy work. God's work is his work. And we are standing. The psalmist David says in Psalm 115, The heaven, even the heaven, are the Lord's and the earth. But he has given to the children of men. So as children of men, here on earth, we are supposed to be doing what we are supposed to be doing. Teaching the word of God. Preaching the word of God prophesying declaring the counsels of God and teaching men and women to pray and to evangelize and maybe in your church none of that's happening but I, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that, uh, that the word of God says now is the time for God to work in the midst of your trouble in the midst of your struggle because it seems though that the enemy in these last days has the people of God like ostrich in the sand. When they serve a God that is so awesome, so great, so supernatural, that they can come anytime to talk to. And so the enemy is causing God's people to be stressed out, to be weary before they start working, to be weary before they start praying. And so... We mobilize ourselves to go on our jobs on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And when it comes to the time to come to the house of God, even on a Sunday, and even come on a midweek service, we are playing slightly with it. And I came by to tell you, if you're a Christian, and in 2020, were you hearing about all the things that are happening, the virus, the, the, the virus in... Um, in, in, in China, which are here about the, in our region, the shakings in Puerto Rico, I think they just had one for 5.7. Okay, shaking up our region. We are seeing the shaking in our Congress. There's a shaking going on, and even though there's a shaking going on, there's some Christians, like ostrich, ostrich Christians, I call them. They, their head is in the sand, and they could never care what happened. You can come and just dig them in the behind, and they would never know what's happening. But God wants his people to awake. We are the ones that can stand up against the coronavirus. 
and to tell the coronavirus to, to stop operating in the Wuhan um, district and to close it down so that men will see the miracle signs and wonders of God. And so if the, if God, if the people of God are not uh, prophesying and declaring and praying, all these diseases will come out from the pit of hell. And so the enemy and his cohorts, they are praying and in our community and neighborhood, they are demonic worshipers, they are satanic churches, and they are working against the, the, the denominational churches, and they are praying that they close. First thing they do, they knock out the pastor, knock out the bishop, knock out prayer and worship, knock, the, knock out the believers, cause them to be stressed out and tired. There are some people who have never been to their church's prayer meeting. From the time they joined the church, they have never been to their church's prayer meeting. I'm encouraging you to come on. You grab a piece of, um, in the Caribbean, we have a, some little journey cake, a journey cake. Get a piece of bread, walk with a sandwich, and we do that when we want to go to the ball game. Okay? We, we, we say, and we got to go there. When you're going to meet with your lover, you, 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 you make sure that you're dressed and all perfumed and all. The cologne is on and everything is ready to go. I believe that this is a time for God to work, but God's looking for people to work with. And so what happened, the demonic churches, they have the, the other denominational churches and a lockdown in the area of prayer. Because when we pray, we pull no principalities and powers. And so if we do not pray, the principalities and powers will go and find more other principalities and powers for our region. They go and call uh, seven more demonic spirits to come and make them stronger. And that's what's happening in our communities, in our islands, in the archipelago of the Caribbean. That's what's happening because we are forgetting to pray in the Caribbean. And so we have got to come back to pray in the Caribbean. We have, we have become the, the, the exporters of carnival. Every place we can, the Caribbean folks are, it's in Leeds, in England, in California, in Canada, in New York, wherever, in Florida, wherever they are, we are transporting the carnival. So we are the Miles Monroe's who are transporting the kingdom of God from the Caribbean to the world. We, we are the Tony Nelsons. These are some of the men who do the seats, who are the movers and shakers in the Caribbean and the world. And so therefore God is calling us, uh, men and women, I believe that we are at a critical stage and I'm here to address God's people because I find that there are some of God's people that they are set in their ways and, they, and their mind, their heart and soul is uh, um, set in stone. And they say, you can preach your best sermon, you, you can talk to me, you can encourage me, but I shall not be moved. But I'm coming to tell you that you better move. Because God is clearing out his house. I saw, I was, we were just in a prayer meeting and I stopped off. These things are happening after the prayer meeting. I'm addressing the world and talking to God's people. We were just in a prayer meeting. I sent everybody home because I just, I, I felt a burden upon my heart to address God's people who are a part of their church. No matter who church you belong to, if they do not have a prayer meeting in the church, start a prayer meeting. There were times when the, 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 the preacher, um, Larry Lee, he was a mover of a, a prayer movement in America. But he's no longer on the scene. So we need some other trendsetters who would lead in prayer. And so pastor, if your church is closed and you don't have a prayer meeting time and you're too busy for a prayer meeting, find the praying mother in the church, find the praying father in the church and let them open the church up and, and declare that you're going to have church, uh, prayer in your community. The enemy wants to close some prayer in our churches, but we should not let, the, the, let it happen. I was speaking to a preacher the other day and he said, well, my church is big and at times it's, it's my, my wife and I in the church hall praying. The enemy is doing something and I'm here to address the church. If you're a part of a church and you do not have a prayer in your church, please tell your pastor, your bishop, or whoever that you want to start prayer. Buy some prayer books, go into the Word of God, and look and search the Word of God and begin to pray. The enemy's job in 2020, if he wants to close down the prayer, then he's going to uh, close down the prophetic, then he's going to close down the apostolic. And they're going to close on the pastoral and he wants to close on everything. But refuse for the enemy to cause you to be tired before you start working. Refuse the enemy to cause you to be stressed out before you start doing anything in the kingdom of God. 
And another thing that the enemy is doing in our region is calling, causing a spirit of disunity. So on the outside, where it is chaotic and, and the earth is shaking and quaking uh, and travailing for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, the, the sons and daughters of God that are manifesting not in the spirit of unity, but they are travailing and manifesting in the spirit of confusion and a spirit of chaos and that ought not to be so God wants us sir. you know why that happened because of a lack of prayer and then we become secular in our mindset we become secular in our, in our outlook and we take God's work hear what the Habakkuk said oh God revive your work Habakkuk 3 2 it is God's work and it is not man's work you cannot manipulate yourself in God's work you cannot curry favor in God's work. You cannot throw people out and pull God and cause chaos. And I just sense that uh, because of the chaotic things that are happening around us, even in our region, we, we've got uh, earthquakes every day on, on, uh, on Puerto Rico. They have even over 102 weeks. The earth just shaking 4.2, uh, 5.2, 6.7, and earthquaking. We had 7.7 .7 in Jamaica. We, we had it uh, uh, impacted uh, Cuba. We had it uh, impacted Florida. And, and yet, uh, the, the people of God, they are still tiptoeing through the toilets. Uh, people of God, this is no time to be secular. This is, a, you, you, they, you have to do a division between the clean and the unclean. And between the priests that are clean and the priests that are unclean. And so you need to separate yourself from unclean men and women of God who are preaching wrong doctrine and wrong counsel. Some of you left your churches when they were preaching truth. And you go to churches where you know that they are teaching you wrong doctrine. We have a lot of drunken Christians. We got a lot of clubbing Christians. We have a lot of people who say they're hiding under grace. Let me tell you something. God is coming through. I prophesy that God's coming. One more time I'm prophesying this. That God's coming through St. Thomas with a sword. And he's going to destroy and clean up the place in St. Thomas. He's cleaning it up over in Tortola. He's cleaning up over in Jamaica, in Trinidad. God is coming with it. those who are, people who are more secular churches. That are more secular and they are they are more secular than being holy god's coming with a sword to judge the church <laughs> and some of you who are not praying god gonna kill you he gonna destroy you he gonna tell you go kick, kick the bucket so in the churches we're gonna have a lot of funeral this year because of, of people who are just standing in the way of a movement of God. People are standing in the way of a glory of God in praise and worship. People are standing in the way of God, grabbing the microphone and preaching wrong doctrine. People who are standing in the way in, in praise and worship. People are standing in the way in the pew and holding on to, to one chair and say, that's my chair. And we'll fight people for chair. Those days are over. <laughs> this is a prophetic word to God's people. God's coming back for his work. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2 says, Oh Lord, Oh God, revive thy work. And we, that, that, that's a, just a prayer line. And God has created and made prayer so easy and the door of prayer for people to enter into. And there are some people will never enter into the place of prayer. A transition is going on. When, when the chief intercessors in some churches uh, deceased, when chief intercessors People who lead prayer in churches become old and diminish the young ones that are taking up the baton and running with it. Because what? The, 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 the demonic churches and the satanic churches have already got them under lockdown and they cannot shake themselves to come to prayer. This thing is deep concerning prayer. And so therefore I'm coming. We, we need in our churches a revival of prayer and a revival of intercession. Prayer is the engine, not the preacher getting up and preaching a sermon on a Sunday and, and the church is closed for the rest of the week. We need prayer every day in the church. We need prayer on a Friday, a Saturday. We need prayer on a weekend. You need to come and start a prayer meeting in your church. You come your, your, by yourself and pray. But we cannot be ostrich Christians. There are too many ostrich. God is sending a warning out to the ostrich Christians. Stop being an ostrich Christian. Just come to the house of God. You soak up a sermon and then you do nothing with the sermon. Don't share the sermon. Nobody know that you are saved. You, and you have no time with God. No other God encounter during the week. And so God is storming me up to warn God's people 
to have some more God encounters. When you're at your desk doing your work, praying the Spirit in your mind. When you're driving uh, in, in the car uh, with your friends, praying the Spirit. Teach them to pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. And so God is sending out a warning. It's time to pray. And, 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 and the shaking is on. But people are not finding the time to pray. And so I'm telling you, find the time to pray. Find the time to pray. The, the clarion call is, find the time to pray. And pastor, if you're discouraged, bishop, if you're discouraged, apostle, if you're in, a discouraged, evangelist, if you're discouraged, make giftings in the body of Christ, if you're discouraged, you pray Habakkuk 3, 2. Oh God, revive your work. Oh God, revive your prayer meeting. Oh God, revive my preaching. Oh God, revive our praise and worship. Oh God, revive my playing. Oh God, revive the church. Lord God, revive the dead and past church. Revive your church. Get us off of patch, load the bar. In the, get us off of hiding our church under black. God, help us send your fire right now in the hearts of your believers. Send a shaking in the hearts of your believers. We need a fire to stir us up to pray. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. And so in Exodus, and I'm going to talk about Moses and I'm going to rest my case. In Exodus chapter 13, 7 to 11. Exodus chapter 13, 7 to 11. My, my heart is quaking. My heart is palpitation, palpitating towards God. My heart is moving towards God. And if you, you have a friend who would want to hear this, just tag them and let them look at it and send it to them. Alive and on demand. Because this is, a, we are on dangerous grounds. When the church becomes prayerless, we are on dangerous grounds. When the church becomes prayerless, we are on sinking sand. When the church becomes uh, 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 prayerless, uh, what happens uh, is that everything that was locked in by uh, the prayers of the other brothers and sisters who are ahead of us uh, in the 16th, the 17th, and 18th, and 19th centuries, and the 20th century, is going to be unlocked in our century. Because we are not uh, keeping it unlocked down in prayer. And that's what I see. I got a vision of uh, all the stuff that were unlocked down by our intercessors that, that's a, that has gone on before us, that are coming up. We have seen it. All the stuff that's coming out of the closet. And if we do not pray to break a revival, more things will come out. And we're gonna, a new prayerless Christian will take all your, five, your, your ten fingers and point towards the world. And so I don't know what's happening to the world. And you're just pointing to the world. Listen, your thumb finger is pointing back to you. Start praying. <laughs> The edict is to begin to pray. P -p begin to pray. Go in your closet and pray. Go on your bed and begin to pray. Drive in your car and begin to pray. Drive around your community and begin to pray. Are you, are you understand me? This is serious business. In 2020, I tell you, I, I, I've been checking around. 2020, we need some fervency in the area of prayer and intercession in our land. I'm talking for our land, St. Thomas. We saw what's happening in our schools. We had a, a school mass fighting. And it seems they happened on one day. One on St. Thomas, one on St. Croix. That's, that's because we don't have people praying. But we have people just reading the newspaper. You read the newspaper and you pray. And you counteract it in prayer. Oh my God, on the island of St. John, we don't have a crime. Somebody gets shot. We don't like to tell our, our, our nasty story. Shot through his neck. You understand me? And so therefore we need, we need to be a bastion where we can pray and say, God, revive your work. Now in Exodus 33, 7 to 11, if you have a Bible, Exodus chapter 33, 7 to 11. Now Moses, now Moses used to take a tent and push it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord will go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. So, so here is it. So here is it that uh, Moses, he wanted, he wanted to pray himself. He wanted the people to pray. And so he, he actually made and ordered a tent. He made the tent. Whether it's out of camels here, whether it's out of camel and, um, and goat skin or what have you. But he created a tent. He put it outside the tent of the congregation 
of the children of Israel. He did. He said, you know what? I've had so many God encounters at the burning bush. You know, the fire was on the bush. And the Shekinah glory was on the bush, but the bush did not burn. I tell you, we need some Shekinah glory in the church. And God said that this last uh, Shekinah glory that's going to visit the church is going to come. There are some people, some place, uh, they're praying. Either in the church or in some bush, uh, praying for the, for the uh, Shekinah of glory to hit uh, some tree. Uh, a mango tree, a coconut tree, a breadfruit tree, something. But there's, there's someone praying. I knew a young man, you know, when, I, when I'm going to the mountains, uh, he would be in the grass. I would hear shaking in the grass and somebody praying. There was a young man in the grass when I was going to look mangoes in the grass praying. My God, may, may that young man pray again. May the spirit of prayer hit that young man again. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody someplace in prayer. Even though you close your church, somebody in your home, open up in your community a place of prayer. God wants some place to pray. So here is uh, Moses. Moses. The king who was over Israel. The apostle over Israel. The leader over Israel. He created a place uh, so that Israel can pray. And so every leader, you're over our church. Come on, you got to open it up for prayer. So come on. Uh, Exodus, visit Exodus 33, 17, 11. You got to pray. You got a congregation. You got some kind of ministry. Open it up. Uh, and declare when it is prayed, prayer time, release a prayer time. So Moses built a tent. He called it a tent of the meeting so that he can go to pray and his people can go to pray. The next verse says, and when Moses went out to the tent, and when Moses went up to the tent, if God has called you to some ministry, some gifting in the church, you should be leading in prayer. If you're the head of uh, the, the prayer meeting, well, you should be leading in prayer. If you're the head of the church, you should be there to pray. Uh, and don't let the enemy discourage you. And I cause to be stressed and tired. You're tired, go to pray. Right? You're sick, go to pray. It, it, this, is it, this is it. 2020 is it. With all the stuff that's coming up. There's a lot of stuff to pray over. A lot of stuff to rebuke. A lot of things to pull down. Don't let the enemy stop your tenacity in the area of prayer. And when Moses, and when Moses went out to the tent, he went out to the tent of meeting to pray. And on a daily basis, all the people rose and stood at the entrance to the tent. Lord God gave churches and the pastors an experience like Moses had. Moses went out to pray. We would not take our prayer lightly. We would not close down prayer. We would not dumb down prayer. Prayer, my brother, prayer, my sister, is the easiest thing a believer can do. You have access to your God. Some of us want to talk to our boss for an increase. Before you talk to God. Some of you want to talk uh, to your wife uh, about the confusion. Before you talk to God. Some of you want to talk to your husband about the confusion. Before you talk to God. You want to talk to your children before, uh, about the confusion. Before you talk to God. Talk to God first. And then you, you talk to the children. He will give you a word what to say to your children. He will give you a word what to say in your church. As he's giving me a word right now to talk to you. Concerning I mean, the, the situation, the griminess we are in concerning the prayer. We are somewhat boxed in and God wants us to have rooms, rooms to move around and dimensions and rooms and visitations because this is what he wants to happen in our time. The time for us to have experiences in prayer. I remember I was in prayer in the, in the island of Antigua, I mean Anguilla, and we were in the valley at the Apostolic Faith Church, and the Apostolic Faith Church in Anguilla said hallelujah. And we were praying in the pastor's office. And we, we are caught up in the glory. And we did not know we were in the glory. Because nobody was telling us anything about glory. I just happened to open my eyes. I saw yellow and gray. I saw kind of colors in the room. I know we were caught up into another dimension. Because we prayed. And I, I, I mean from in the wee hours of the night. At like 12 o'clock. Wake down to the morning into 5. We were refreshed. We came out the room. And we, we joined the other prayer meeting that was started at the, the church. We, so we were so refreshed. So we refreshed. Five, we were caught up, we were in something, and we never knew what was happening when we were praying. The pastor said he opened the door and tried to come in to stop us, but he could not stop us. He, he has to explain to me what he saw when he opened the door. 
Because he too was dumbfounded when he opened the door. The, glo the, the Shekinah glory of God was so evident in the room and billowing and movement and all kinds of stuff happening that, that he was so stupendous in the glory of God. You, I mean, we got caught up and I said, God, I, I, that's not going to happen again. I'm not going to enter in the glory of God. I, I don't know I'm, not, I'm in the glory of God. But I, we were in the glory of God. <laughs> oh my God. Only when I begin to study about the glory of God, the, 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 the Holy Spirit remind me, hey, you were in the glory of God in Anguilla, and you never knew it. What is that? I got to get a picture of that when I, when I go to heaven. Woo! I can't talk about you, God, about that. In Exodus 33, 7 says, And when Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose up and stood at the entrance of their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. Men and women of God who lead God's congregation and churches, do not let the enemy stress you out and stop you from leading your congregation in a place of prayer. If one shows up, pray. If zero shows up, pray. Because prayer is the oil and the engine that's keeping your sermons and your messages oil and grease. And with the anointing and download of scores and information and wisdom from heaven, you stop praying, you got drought in the house. Oh, if they won't come uh, to pray when you designate pray on a Sunday morning. Pray after your sermon. Pray before your, your sermon. Oh my God. Somebody said, my God. And so the man of God, he, when he arose, the people also arose. And they watched the man of God, Moses. I pray that God, that, that the men and the women of God in your church would watch you come to the house of God to pray. And say, oh, Pastor Kai is there. Pastor is in there praying. I know he's in the opportunity. All by himself. But in something of a different world. The next chapter says, As Moses went into the tent, as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the cloud spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of his tent. My God. No, 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 no. Now this is what the, the experience Moses had under the, over, under the old covenant. And then the, the last time I checked, God says that that which is in the old, I'm going to do it in the new, in our time, in our 21st century. And it's going to be more manifested. It will be more tangible than what, we, what Moses saw. So Moses went at a place of prayer. Let me tell you, when you go at a place of prayer, watch out the glory of God is going to show up. The Shekinah, the splendor of God is going to show up. The lightnings of God are going to show up. The lights of God is going to show up. And all you're going to hear is <sighs> Don't stop everything about when the Shekinah shows up. It's some stately um, light. Just, but that light has sound. That's, that, that light has emotion. That light has activity. I'm, gonna feel, I'm feeling, as I talk to you about the light, I feel like the cupboard just come upon me. I'm in church here all by myself, so if it drops, maybe my wife at home looking at this, so if I don't reach home, I'm in church under the glory. Listen, let me tell you something. This thing is tangible. This thing is tangible and manifest. As I'm speaking to you, I, right now I just felt like a shift. Like, like, like a shift. When I talk, when I tell you about, when, when I talk to you about, I, I, maybe listen. Okay. Now this thing is serious. Woo, my God. Listen, this, 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 this thing is serious. I, I, what I'm talking about today, the Shekinah glory, a, a shift. Listen, when the shift comes, you suddenly got to pause. All right? And pause good, because if I talk, I'm going to go talk, get rich. But let me tell you something. That was a, a little glory time, a little pause, had to pause, a little glory time. Ooh. So 
as, as, as I began to speak up with the Shekinah glory, I just sense like a wave came shoo, and a shift came. All right? I mean, I could have passed out. Oh, my God. Because I've been on Facebook. But I, I paused a little bit. Jesus. Listen, this thing is real. I said, as, I, I, as I, I was speaking to you, the glory of God just came. Just came. As I was talking about the Shekinah glory, explaining about the Shekinah glory, the glory of God came and just overshadowed me. The, uh, this is serious business. This ain't, this ain't no play. This is serious stuff we're talking about. And, and I trust that, uh, I mean, it not only felt here, as I'm in a global life church talking to you, but I, but I, I just got transported to Facebook, transported. Because some people might think this is a joke, but transported. As, as, as folks touch their iPhone and their iPad and their laptop, that they, they, they sense that the, the, the glory of God being transported to them. And, 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 and mushroom in their homes and do, do stuff and dissolve doubt and cause pains to cease and um, let healing come and raise the dead. That's what happens when the glory of God comes. They start speaking stuff under the glory. Woo! My God. This is it. Mm. So he says, at Moses, we're talking from Exodus chapter 33. This thing is serious. This thing is from Israel. This is what the world the world needs. When they come to the church, they need to the download the glory. You just say, God, download the glory. Boom. Hit everybody. The dry folks, the dead folks, and everybody. And everybody get the glory of God together. Boom. That's what God's going to bring to the church. Woo! I tell you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exodus 33. So he says, as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance. So I was explaining that this happened under the, the old covenant. Now if this can happen under the old covenant, just imagine and just picture what, what can happen, the possibilities of what can happen and we begin to open our churches to pray and the congregation come out to pray. And while we were praying, it was, this was one man praying, Moses and the Shekinah show up. What happened when the community of saints come together, the corporate body of church, uh, Christ come together and we begin to pray and churches are uh, lapping together and churches are coming together to pray. And then the, the Shekinah glory come down in a large fashion, a grander fashion than Moses glory hallelujah because God said this at this glory is going to be greater ah, my God and so that's what the enemy wants to do to stop us from entering into the glory that's what he's stressing us out causing our churches to be confused and to be stressed and to be weary and to be sleepy you don't go to your work um, sleepy and, and you, you get yourself out for a few but you drink your coffee and everything but people are coming to the house of God just to sleep and relax and just as a pastor in here Oh my God, those days are over. Those days are over. God's work is requiring much more than this. In Exodus chapter 33 and verse 7 uh, to 11, we are reading, it says, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face. He said, uh, uh, He spoke to him out of glory. But the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Uh, look here. In, in Exodus 33, he says, The Lord would speak to Moses. When you get at a place of meeting to talk to God, God will talk to you. But yet, I'm talking to the Christian. There are some Christians and some pastors and bishops and apostles and prophets and evangelists and worship leaders and intercessors. They don't want, they don't come to the place of prayer because they don't want God to talk to them. They are living a shoddy life. They are living a sinful life. But when you come to God, no prophet going to tell you you sin. You say to God, God, it is me, it is me, it is me, oh God. And tonight God is sending out a carrier call for men and women of God to lift their hands up and stop sinning and say, it is me, it is me, it is me, oh God. And I prophetically blow upon you to change your heart. Blow to change your direction that you're going into. The Lord would speak. But I tell you, when I blow, I like the glory of God just will hit. That's what we want. No, no, this is, this is serious, tangible stuff. And the, the blow, and the glory of God is knocking down folks in their home. Ha! 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 This is serious.
serious business. That's the wind of God blowing out of your iPhone and iPad, blowing in your home, blowing stuff off the wall. <laughs> but time, the wind of Holy Spirit and the wind of God blowing your house, change the trajectory of your thinking and your mindset concerning God, the things of God, and not giving up, but pushing and pressing. When I return, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find men praying, women praying, men or women pressing men, and men giving up because of the times? Press, my brother, press my sister. So we're talking about, uh, we're breaking that dichotomy of praying. We need a meeting place. It could be in your bed, in your car, by the side of your bed, at your church, under a tree, once you're praying to God. It could be at a river, wherever it's tranquil and peaceful for you. Wherever, we're in your boat, in your plane, in your jet, find a place to pray. And the Lord will speak to Moses face to face. When you talk to God, God's going to talk back to you. God's going to talk to you. God's going to give you elevations and God's going to give you manifestation of your spirit. God will even take your time into his room, the rooms of prayer, rooms of, and you see things in the room of the spirit. You can't, the Christians uh, who stay, I mean, like the chicken and chicken and not praying, uh, they're not going to fly like the eagles and soar into heavenly things. And that's what the enemy don't want us to have heavenly experiences. These are times, naturally, it's easy to experience heavenly experiences in these times. The Lord will speak to Moses face to face. Why people don't like to pray is that uh, there's so many, there's so much stress and distress in their lives and so much confusion and junk in their life that they cannot kneel and stand and pray because they, 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 they don't uh, want to see themselves meeting God face to face because they know God want to tell them about the junk in their lives and the stuff that they're doing. That's not on par with God's righteousness. And another thing is uh, when you, you pray, it says uh, that you become a friend of God. Moses, when he prayed, he became a friend of God. You want to be the friend of Donald Trump, the friend of Obama, the friend of Queen Elizabeth, the friend, uh, you know, of uh, of our governor, the friend of, uh, and you want to name drop. I took a picture with them, see myself with them. He's my friend. What about taking a selfie with God's word? Uh, and in prayer. That's a good selfie. And send out to your friends, I'm in prayer with God. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face. When we pray, we encounter God face to face. He sees us uh, internally, externally, soul, spirit, body. Amen. The word of God goes in within, in within us and has the ability to divide even into the marrow and divide stuff and take out the junk and the scum. And so that when the fire comes, uh, all the fires to ignite you to be a man and woman of God. God's fire wants to come upon you to reignite, reignite your life uh, so you can be a man and a woman of God. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. Then Moses will return to the camp. But his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. In the name of Jesus. And so I, I have something to do. There's a fly, a big fly flying around. I don't know what you got inside here. So I command you to die. Die. In the name of Jesus. And stop coming around me, causing confusion. I mean, somebody transposed themselves into a fly, you're dead. <clears throat> don't come in here messing with me. I don't play them games. I'm serious. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face. As a man speaks with his friends. As a man speak with his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young age, Joshua, son of, uh, of Nun, did not leave the tent. So we thought that Moses loved the glory and the presence of God. But Joshua, the son of Nun, even loved it more, the presence of God more. Moses had to get up and go judge and go out, solve the confusion and the conflict. But, but, but Joshua said, Uh huh, I'm off today, I'm staying in the glory. Take a day off to get into the glory. We take day off, take a day off to pray. Take a, a day off to mobilize yourself back into the area of prayer, back into your, your, the calling that God has called you. The, the Christians in this particular time millennium, we are taking the things of God too lightly. We are not pressing in. We're not. Uh, we, there, there are so many people who are secular and preaching a secular gospel and teaching preaching is so secular to teach people how to sin. Preachers teaching people how to sin instead of preaching to people and telling them how to stay away from sin. Oh God, help us. We really need the glory of God. And so we looked at Moses. We saw how Moses built himself a tent. 
because you want to meet with God. Build yourself a place. You could build somebody, you might have to build a tree, a tree house to get up there from everybody, all the noise in your community. Some of you might have to take a bill like to your church. So I just came by tonight just to encourage us to pray. And before I'm done, I'm going to pray. But it, it, to end it, it says, that we know we don't have to build a tabernacle, go to a tabernacle or anything. Because hear what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 3 and verse 16 says, in the NIV, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. Emmanuel, God with us, has taken up residence within us through his spirit. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? You are God's temple. Just begin to pray. Your spirit, your soul, your body, uh, your spirit man prays. Your, your soul is man yearns to, to change. Amen. The spirit man is changed by the word of God. But you're, you're going to change your flesh. Hallelujah. And your soul by your prayer. The prayers that you pray, you change. The things that you would, you did with your soulish hands and you drank with your soul, you, you, you got you, you to deal with them in prayer and fasting. And say, if I'm a Christian, I should be changed. Not a secular Christian. Not a secular Christian, but you're going to be a, 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 a righteous Christian. There has to be a, a, a line between the unrighteous things, the secular things, and the righteous things. Now we are mixing it up. I'm a little bit righteous and a little bit secular. Mm -hmm. God said, no, God wants all. But the last time I checked, God says, I want all your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your sexuality, everything. God said he wants. But we just give God the tongue to sing on a Sunday. And then we go out and we do everything else that's sin. Monday to Friday and Sunday. So your body is the temple of the living Holy Spirit now. So wherever you are, you can set up your tabernacle and begin to pray and to begin to worship. So I was talking about prayer. Let me go and pray. This is praying in the Holy Ghost. This is what has been, been locked in and people have been throwing it out their church. When you don't know how you are to pray, when you don't know how to manifest, you pray in the Holy Ghost. And I will prophesy that God's going to surprise a lot of preachers who have preached. Some of your Baptist preachers, some of your Seventh-day Adventist preachers, a lot of your preachers and the Church of Christ and all those different preachers who don't preach and say is and talk bad about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will visit you in your sleep, fill you with the Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to have to resign your church. That's how bad God is. You guys say, hi, you've been talking about me so bad. And uh, some of you have to resign. Start another church on the road. Don't bring other people on the road. You can never change the doctrine. That's prophetic. Some of you are seeing heaven, some of you see on earth. And I'm not ashamed of praying in tongues. And I pause to say, that if God can give France French, the Spaniards Spanish, and to give all the different languages all in Africa, the Yoruba B language and all the different languages, how come God can't have a heavenly language for the church? So this is the language that was despised by churches for centuries. I got the heavenly language, so I communicate with him. Now when I begin to pray in the spirit, it's also enhanced my health. I knock sickness out of my body because I am filling myself up with the Holy Spirit. You see, you, you build yourself up on the most holy faith when you pray in the Spirit. So you, when you build yourself up, you knock things out that is not supposed to be in your body, in your life. Okay, that's a sample, an example. And now, if you're a pastor, you're an apostle, you're somebody, and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit right now, just touch your iPhone while you listen to me. Touch your iPad. Touch your television screen, run into your bathroom right above now, run into a secret place right now, run, don't run outside, but run into some place, a bedroom, private, because you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I release the baptism of the Holy Spirit to the men and women of God who are saying that they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Baptize them now. Let a fresh wind blow in the in, in their mind, their soul and the spirit. 
as they open their mouths uh, and as they say hallelujah, praise God, let the, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the, the power of tongues and the infilling the Holy Spirit rush into their minds, their soul and spirit and upon their tongue, fill them now in the name of Jesus. Let the atmosphere around them change. Let the Shekinah glory hit their, their life. Let the Kabod and the weight of God touch their lives right now. In the name of Jesus. Fill with the men of God. The play fill the men. Hallelujah. Of the clock tonight. Fill the believers. Fill the believers. Fill men, men and women who are watching this and say, I can't believe this is true. Fill them right now in the name of Jesus. It's cause revival of the Holy Spirit now. I blow in the I blow. I blow the wind of change. Change in doctrine. Change in manifestation. Change in thought. Change in speech. Now in Jesus' name. I tell you, this thing hits you. Hit my box up if your brain put it on and said, My God, what's happening here? What's happening in my house? Something's happening in your house. Woo! Something is happening. I can feel it right here. Something happening. Woo! My God, something is happening in the house. Hallelujah. Healing in the house. People are sending this thing to people who are sick. People who are sick are getting up their their deathbed. This is, this is it. Uh, that's why this look about guy created Facebook. I love it. People, hallelujah. Riba katasheba katanyeva. This is praying in heavenly language and tongues. This is in English. This is heavenly dynamics. Heavenly dimension stuff. And I pray in the spirit. God just gave me a vision of a, a man of God. I, I think he has a red, a red shirt on and he has um, like box on it and he wants to commit suicide because of something he did in the church. And so right now I stop the spirit of suicide. I chase it out of your mind, your psyche and your life now. And I, I pray now that you become normal. You become normal, heavenly normal, and I think normal, and we cause a shift from demonic, demonic spirits that wants to cloud your mind. Now every demonic fetter and whatever they had on you, we say lose him now and let him go, and you become normal, heavenly normal. Woo! Maybe it just came for that person. Ah, this is your stuff tonight. Listen, you can only get this by praying in tongues and praying the Holy Spirit. You go beyond yourself. You pray out of yourself and beyond yourself. You're praying in to the heavenlies and going to the heavenly chambers and hooking up to the Holy Spirit. Hooking up to the angel. Man, listen. Shela Marianda Lava Katashi Babanda. Bumbo Riva Katashata Katan Shelebanga. Bumbo Riva Lava Katashimba. Bumbo Riva Katashimba. Yemba Riva Baba. As a matter of fact, let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Those who can pray in the Holy Ghost and those who can't pray. Shilabakata just begin to pray. Yeah, but this is how awesome this thing is. Yandala Kate Bakata Shimbra Manda. Remember, refill those who need a refilling. Yandalaba, those who have never been in a prayer meeting now. Fill them. Riandalaba Kata Shimanamananda Rebanda. Yamba Riba cause our doors. The doors of our houses to be open for prayer. If the church house is not open, we open up our personal doors, our businesses. That's how demon Shakarian started. Yanda Riba in prayer. Yanda Gabba start taking prayer outside the church again. Yanda Riba prophesy. Yanda Riba Baba Koto Shumba. Yanda Riba Baba Koto That's how the woman the globe began. Yanda Riba 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 Kata Shumba Daba Kata Shabanda. Yanda Riba Baba Koto Shumba. As I pray in the Holy Ghost, I just sense the presence of angels. Yanda Baba Yanda Baba Baba Koto all around me. Yanda Baba Baba Nuri Baba Baba Koto Shumba Riba. Yanda angels are screaming just to protect me. Yanda Riba Baba Kata Shata Kata Shande Lele Baba Koto Ba. Yanda Riba Baba Baba Koto Shumbi Lele Baba Kata Shata Kata Nda Baba. Yaba Kata Ba. Yambo Riba. Bushumbo Riba Baba Baba Nde Riba Kata Shiba Kata Nishi Riba. Yela Baba Kata Shumbo Riba Baba Baba Koto Shumbo Riba. Yamba Riba Baba Kata Shumbo Riba Nde Baba Kata Shumba. Yaba Kata Shumbo Riba Nde Baba Kata Shumbo Riba. Yaba Kata Shumbo Riba Nda. Lord, take us into visions, visions of glory, visions of glory, visions of glory. Shila Marienda Baba Baba Koto Shumba Baba. As we pray in the Holy Ghost, as we pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Take us into visions of glory. Take us transport. Your men and women into visions of glory. Take us into visions of glory. Take us into visions of glory. Shila mananda riba baka shete kela ba dum remba mbala ba. Hila narianda riba baba kata shimbo riba. In the name of Jesus, take us into visions of glory. Yanda riba koto shumbre mbanda la ba. Mimba riba baba kata shimbo riba mbando koto shanda la ba. Mina riba kata shikre mananda riba kata shimbre banda. Yanda la riba kati shimbre banda la ba kata shiba. Yamba riba baba kata shimbre banda riba. Yeba riba baba kata shumba dimba Yanda riba baba kata shanda riba Banda riba kata shimbra mbanda liba kata Mim riba kata shimbra landa riba kata shimba Mum riba kata shimbra banda laba Yanda lalaba kata shimbra ando riba baba kata shandi And so Father we pray we call men and women to back to the place of prayer like Moses Moses who built a place, a tent where he can come and pray God, I pray as men and women listen to this uh, stream, this, uh, teaching. Lord, we thank you, Father. You will stir themselves up. You, they will stir themselves up to a place of prayer, a, a place of intercession, a place of wailing. You're going to call your wailing women and wailing men back, uh, back to duty as we begin to pray and cry out for our, our community, our territory, the places where we go to church. Uh, we pray, we cry out for our leaders. We cry out. Uh, Lord God, as I pray in the Holy Ghost, let uh, men and women who come across uh, this uh, and demand, uh, let them sense uh, a passion and compassion for your heart. Uh, let them encounter you. Uh, let them have a God encounter. Let them have many God encounters. Lord God, shake us again. God, stir us up again. With all the shakings that go on. Lord, shake your people. Shake the body of Christ. Back to the place of prayer. Back to the place of intercession. Lord, we are so much concerned about money. We are so much concerned about our job. We are so much concerned about just sitting by the television watching somebody else do something in the kingdom. Oh God, shake us again. Stir up the intercessors. And we call forth the prophetic intercessors. We call forth the worshiping intercessors. Yandu riba ba God, stir us up again. Stir us up again. Shila ba kata shandu riba ba ba yandu riba. So the preaching intercessors. Yandu riba the apostolic intercessors. Intercessors, Riendo Riba Kata Shanda, the believers, intercessors, Yanda Lava Kata Shim, Rimanda Riba Kata Shamba, Bumbo Riba Kata Shaya Shamba Mamba, Stir us up again, shake us up again, Yanda Riba Kata Shanda, Riba Kata Shim, Randa Lava, Riendo Riba Kata Shimbo, Riendo Riba Kata Shimba Dimba, Yanda Riba Kata Shimbo Riba, Yambo Shumba Rimba, and by the means of this streaming, Lord God, you're the stir up. Many around the world to begin to pray. Many to begin to call upon the men of God as they come to you just to pray. Lord God, you're going to do something. Rabbi, I see. There are supernatural activities happening through this this sound, this video, this streaming. Men will have God encounters in the area of prayer. Men and women will have God encounters, visitation in the area of prayer. Yanda Rabbi, Lord God, we unlock Rabbi, Rabbi, Church is the world. Lock and lock down in the era of prayer. Reba Bokoto shall be unlock reportals of prayer. We begin to cry out to the true and living God. We begin to pray and cry out to you. We begin like Moses to have face-to-face -face encounters. We begin uh, to become a friend of God in prayer. Now we pray ourselves back to the place of prayer. Shanda. Shanda. 
We pray truth out of us. We pray truth out of our churches. We pray truth out of the intercessory group. We pray truth out of the worshiping groups. We pray truth out of the pastors. We pray truth out of the pastoral groups. We pray truth out of the worshiping 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 groups. We pray Give us strength to press. Yanda riba baba koto shumba. Ya Lord God, we will. Our riba as intercessors, we give up too easily, too quickly. Yanda riba baba koto shumba. Lord God, riba baba in this house, send in a way of intercession. Give us, Lord God, the strength to intercede. Yanda riba baba koto shumba. Give us the wisdom and knowledge to know how to intercede, how to pray. Yanda riba kata shumba. Yanda riba kata shumba. Yanda riba baba londi kata shumba. Bush kuto ma yanda riba kata shumba riba. Yanda riba baba koto shumba. Lord God, we pray out destruction out of our land. We come up against senseless, about homicides and suicide in our land of Saint Thomas. Where we are based, we are now in the name of Jesus. We stronger hold and we displace principalities and powers that have been set up because of prayerlessness and lack of prayer and no emphasis on prayer. But Lord God, you could move by one, but this one man, remember, stay back behind after prayer, and we are pushing. Yanda riba kata shumba riba baba kata shanda. This place demonic activity in our land. This place gang banging in our land. This is how we do it. This place confusion out of our land. Beat confusion out of our schools. And Saint Croix, Saint John, out of the British Virgin Islands, out of Saint Thomas. Lord God, send the cabal. Send an awakening. Send an awakening. Send an awakening. Ah, reba koto shumba. Send an awakening. Send an awakening. Shela barienda la reba koto shumba. Right now I'm giving birth. So right here, if I put my hand right here, okay, so there's like a, a birth in pain. But men can give birth to. Shela barienda la reba koto shumba. Yanda lo gabi preto our land. We give birth. Yanda reba for the crazy stuff that's happening in our land. We give birth to a transformation. We give birth to redemption. We give birth to clarification. We give birth for transformation. We give birth for reformation. We give birth for revival. We give birth. Reba reba boda in the work of God. God, this is your work. We pray, Lord God, revive your work. God, revive your work. Yanda reba kato shumba reba. Yanga da kato shimbo yamba. Yemba reba kato shenda. I'm praying, preaching and teaching. Right while I'm giving birth, I'm your Reba Kosha in travail. Right, right, my pain just hit me here. That's travail pain. Nothing wrong with me, but I just put my hand there. I just help myself. Yelaba Katashenda. As we give birth, in travail. As we give birth, even Zion begin to travail. She give birth. So tonight I give birth. I give birth to transition in this house. I give birth to the multitude that's coming to this house. I give birth for the face of this house to change. I give birth for the multitude to come. I give birth that while I'm praying, God speaking to men and women in these Virgin Islands to begin packing up and come on up to the global night church. And as I pray. This is it. Yanda la baba baka. I gotta pray. I gotta just get that. I download in the spirit. I can't pray down in English. Yela makoto shumba nimba kata. Yela makoto go shumba re baba. I will. I pray the manifestation of it. Yela baba kata kata shimbre nanda la baka. Yela baka to shumba re baba nanda la baka kata shimba. Yela la re la re baka kata shimba. Begin to shift things over our regions. Shift, shift. 
shift uh, tragedy over our region. Uh, shift it. Shit uh, your tragedy. Uh, of hurricane, shift it. Uh, tragedy of earthquake, shift it. Uh, tragedy of tsunami, shift it. Uh, tragedy uh, of Nora virus. Uh, Corona virus, Rimamamamongra Zika virus, shifted out of our situation, out of our, out of our earwaves. Mangreba Koto Shumba, I worry at the other star shift, cancer out of our atmosphere, shift the spell of cancer that's plaguing this virgin island, shift it, shift cysts out of us, shifts of fibroids out of us. Extricate fibroids out of us uh, that's attacking uh, this generation. Shedalakatan Shedeva, Boom Rikelakate Shimbrandanga, Yelabakato Shumba Dengreba Katashimba Daba, Banda Rebakata Shimbrandang Rebakato Shumba, Danda Labakato Shimbrandanda Reba. And so far we pray that the church has been in such a uh, prayerless state for so long. And there are so many prayerless believers. My heart goes out uh, to the prayerless believers. Uh, those who signed up to a church, uh, joined the church but can't pray, never came to a prayer meeting. Uh, Lord, stir us up again. Uh, cause us to cause our prayer meeting uh, attendance to be even more than a Sunday morning time. Uh, stir us up again. Uh, Try your turn. Let the engines of prayer uh, in this dispensation, in this 21st century, begin to turn again. I prophesy to the prayer engines of the house of God. I pray for the portals of the prayer engines to be open. Prayer engines to be open. Prayer engines to be open. We command them prophetically to be open. In the name of Jesus, we will no longer we prophesy that we no longer longer dumb down prayer. Yanda river baba, we will not dumb no prayer. Pastors will not dumb no prayer. The believers will not dumb no prayer. Yanda river, if I will grab a bite, grab a lunch, grab something, and come to the house to pray. We refuse to let prayer die. Prayer will not die in this house. Prayer will not die in that church. We refuse for you to die. But then we bury rather than the death of prayerlessness. Die prayerlessness. We bury you tonight out of this house. I'm prophesying from global and church, so I'm praying up the house and in the house. <laughs> Woo! Well, I tell you, woo, we have had many encounters. As I share with you, we have had the glory encounter. When I began talking to you about the cardboard and also for the manifest presence of God, the lightnings of God, the lights of God. The Shekinah glory of God coming. Man, I tell you, a shift came. I pray that a shift will continue in their life. If you have some friends and you think that they need to hear this to encourage them, kindly send it over to encourage them so they can be encouraged. And so I said to all my friends, this was a, a prophetic encounter and a prophetic teaching that you're listening to here at Global Life Church. If you like to just put something in my box and say, hey, I listen to you. Hey, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Hey, I got healed. You can just do that. Put it in. Whatever message you want to send to me, just send it. Because God is about to do something new in your life and in your church. Bless you. If you want me to come to your church to start the fires of revival, prophetic intercession, prayer, you'll call me. Or to your house, to a hotel room, a ballroom. Wherever you are, hallelujah, we will come. Because I, we want God to do something. We are about birthing intercessors. We are about birthing men and women of God to pray. To hold up the hands of men and women who are hanging down. So you can contact me in my box, on Facebook, through Messenger. You can even call me. Or you, you don't need my, uh, my cell phone number. You can call me. You can come to my cell phone. You can call me on Messenger. Just put up my name, Oral Hazel. Hit me up on Messenger, a word of encouragement, commendation. You want me to release a prayer? Once I'm not in a meeting, I'll do it. Amen. So God bless you. We love you. Thank you for joining me for this prophetic encounter and teaching and the manifestation of interceding in prayer. God bless you. If you love it, share with your friends. Let them pray as they look. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.